Assalamu alaikum. What is the importance of dua or supplication in our lives? Who do we go to in the times of tribulation? How about man and his limitations in providing and giving? What is the importance of the prayer of the parents to the children? To know the answers of these questions and more details, join me. I am Ahmed Salim and my guest Said Al Nawab in tonight's show live from Karbala. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. May the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon you, dearest viewers around the world. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Live from Karbala, a new episode from Imam Hussein TV3, the eye, the eye opening uh, screen, Imam Hussein TV3. The more you watch Imam Hussein TV3, the more you know about Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. Tonight's show, inshallah, we will continue our discussion about Imam Hussein, peace be upon him and the revolution of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, especially the reform that Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, recommended in his revolution. Also, I would like to welcome a very honorable guest from London, UK, Sayyid Ali Nawab. Salaamun Alaikum, Sayyidna. Salaamun Alaikum, Rahmatullah. Sayyidna, it's Ashura and everybody wishes to be here, especially in this eighth day, uh, the eighth uh, day from Muharram. What do you think if we stand for a while just to recite a short visitation sure. on behalf of the viewers, on behalf of those who could not make it to come to visit Imam Hussein in this Ashura, shall we? Yes, please. Ya Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdillah Assalamu alayka ya Ibn Rasulillah السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين Warahmatullahi wa barakatuh. O Imam, Allah's peace and blessings and His salutations be upon you. O Master of Martyrs, Allah's salutations be upon you and your son, Ali al Akbar. Allah's salutations be upon you and upon all the companions that sacrificed their life in your path and the path of Islam. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا أبا الفضل العباس بن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك أيها العبد الصالح المطيع لله ولرسوله السلام عليك وعلى أمك الطاهرة العالمة المجاهدة أم البنين السلام عليك وعلى أختك الحوراء زينب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا أبا الفضل العباس ورحمة الله وبركاته
Dear viewers, welcome again to Live from Karbala. Yes, Sayyidna, welcome again. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Dear viewers, I uh, also would like to encourage each and every one of you to contact us on the social network. You can find us on Facebook, like our page, facebook.com slash TV 3 and tweet us on Twitter at TV 3 Please send us your message, your comments, questions, and suggestions about the channel, about the program, and about any other questions and uh, related to Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, and the uh, reform of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. So, you know, we have ways to contact God. We have ways to contact Allah Almighty. And probably one of the most important way, it is supplicating God. I mean, we talking to God in a, in a simple way is different from supplicating Him in special words. Yes. In the way that we choose the uh, important, I mean a special way, we choose the special time and also we choose special sensitive words yeah. even with our God. So what is the importance of dua or supplication in our life? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, First of all, the word dua means an, a form of prayer. Uh -huh. And prayer is attributed and associated with religion yes. or with belief. Yes. Because if you wanted to ask someone something, ask a friend of yours or a family member, you don't pray to them. Yes. You just go and speak to them the way you speak to other people and say, for example, I want you to help me. Mm -hmm. You won't have this sensitive emotional feeling when you speak to them. Yes. But when we use the word dua or supplication mm -hmm. or prayer, mm -hmm. it coincides with a special emotional circumstance. Either it's to do with the time that you are suffering from a particular problem, mm -hmm. you are going through a difficult time, um, you are suffering from an illness which you cannot find the cure for. So here, or you might be lost, or you might be going through um, a number of difficult um, emotional situations with um, to mm -hmm. do with your own life or with the life of your family yes. or the life of your friends. But before we go into the, the word dua or the word supplication, let's understand what it means. Yes. Because dua in the language or supplication in the language means you seeking help. You asking someone to help you. It means worshipping. Mm -hmm. It's a way of... For, um, obedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. So you are um, doing as Allah wants you to do. Yes. It's kind of nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. It's a prayer, salat, as we pray every day. In our prayers, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, the first, the first um, chapter, the first surah we read in the Quran or in our in the Salah as well. Yes. We say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's itself a form of dua and supplication. Uh -huh. You are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings He has given you. That's that is a form of dua. Mm -hmm. And then we go on to continue reciting this verse until we reach uh, okay. O Allah, we ask you to guide us into the right path. Mm -hmm. That is also, the first was a type of thanking, a form of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. for the blessings. The second is a request. You are, you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you. And then you come to specify which path Mm -hmm. The path of the righteousness, yes. عليهم, the ones that you blessed them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is um, in our daily prayers. Yes. Also, when we raise our hands yes. in this form and we put our hands in front of our faces, yes. in our prayers and outside our prayers, we also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
for example the famous dua and supplications we uh, recite usually in our prayers is we say Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar bijahi muhammadin wa alayhi wa ta'ala is that we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rabbana atina wa Allah give us in this lifetime everything good all the blessings wa fil akhira also in the hereafter because we are here for a short period of time and then we are going to move out and continue our walk towards the hereafter وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّرَ Oh Allah, refrain us, forbid us from going towards mm -hmm. the hellfire. Yes. And another dua, which is a form of supplication, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَي Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness and I ask you to forgive my parents as well. We say, رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي the day that I stand before you on the day of judgment. So, this is the importance of dua in the life of human beings. Is that Allah, He created us and we always need Allah's help. Because He is the all-knowledgeable, He is the all-powerful, He is the one that blesses mankind, He is the one that supports mankind. He is the one that helps mankind in difficulties. Yes. So here, we always go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because our sustenance mm -hmm. and our bounties are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always, through the Holy Quran and uh -huh. Ahl Bayt alayhim as advises us to always call upon Him. As I've mentioned in the previous nights, if we want to hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to say to us, yes. we need to read the Holy Quran or listen to the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as mm -hmm. But every mankind needs to speak to his creator because there is something in our existence is called emotion mm -hmm. and it's called need. One of the emotions or one of the needs that we all need is that we need to have some peaceful time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We know that there is an ultimate power attracting us or pulling us towards it. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. So, no doubtly, every day, every moment, we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to provide and make use and make space for ourselves to sit down in our own time and speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. So prayer mm -hmm. is a way of calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes. seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. and sometimes you um, raise your hand and forward your hand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you are begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to support you and bring down his sustenance uh -huh. and blessings upon you. Alhamdulillah. Sidna, how about that sometimes when we have struggles, problems, troubles, or uh, difficulties in our life, these things m almost take uh, most of our focus, most of our energy. Yes. So, and sometimes we come patient to pass them or to solve them, and sometimes we this uh, kind, uh, we, we lose this uh, patience. Yes. So, who do we go to in the times of tribulation? I mean, what should we do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me move a step backwards before I answer this question. Yes, please. Before I explain who we go to in times of difficulty mm -hmm. and tribulations, let's find out the different types of difficulties and tribulations. Yes, that exactly. We go through yeah. and who we need to go to in these kind of problems. Uh -huh. Imam Hussein, the great man who we are learning from his school and university these days, on the day of Ashura, he recited a, and he supplicated a very beautiful supplication. Mm -hmm. He says, Allahumma anta thiqati fi kulli karb wa rajai fi kulli shiddah 
وأنتلي في كل أمر ثقة وعدة فكم من هم يضعف فيه الفؤاد وتقل فيه الحيلة ويخذل فيها الصديق ويشمت به العدو فأنزلته بك وشكوته إليك رغبة فيه إليك عما سواك ففرجته وكشفته وكفيتنيه فأنت يا رب ولي كل نعمة وصاحب كل حسنة ومنتهى كل رغبة Here out of all the problems out of all the difficulties out of all the sorrows that Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura was facing out of the enemies depriving himself and his family and his little children of water for three days out of surrounding them and preventing them from being free to go wherever he wants yes out of attacking his camps out of killing his companions out of sacrificing he himself sacrificed the most beloved of people to his heart his brother Abel Fadl al-Abbas his son Ali al-Akbar his nephew al-Qasim and so on Imam yes. Hussein turns to who? to his sister? no to his relatives? no to his friends? no he turns to his creator he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what more does a man need to go through for him to understand that mm -hmm. he needs to speak to his creator mm -hmm. in these situations we learn that the only existence and the only being that can help us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Hussein says Allahumma anta thiqati oh Allah I I trust you I put my trust in you fi kulli karb in every tribulation, tribulation in every problem ورجائي في كل شدة and I seek your help in every problem in every difficulty وأنت لي في كل أمر ثقة وعدة in everything I turn to you O Allah فكم من هم and how many difficulties how many things that were so in indulging and engaging me in my thoughts of هم and sorrow وكم من فكم من هم يضعف فيه الفؤاد وتقل فيه الحيلة ويخذل فيها الصديق there are times that even my friends they leave me and they go away leaving me in my problem we as human beings we go through these kind of things sometimes our own friends sometimes our own family members they leave us in times of difficulty here Allah سبحانه وتعالى through the supplication of Imam Hussein alayhi salam wants to teach us that this is your master this is the one that you follow and you love he is teaching you how to speak to your lord at times of difficulty and there are other means of supplications during difficulties and and needs of mankind um, i will narrate to you some of the uh, yes, verses in the holy quran first of all allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he calls us to speak to him uh -huh. to ask him Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim قُلْ مَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْلَا دُعَاءُكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times mankind commits sins and mistakes so much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says okay if you do not need me then go and do whatever you want but if it wasn't for our dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have provided sustenance and help so we need to Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he can help us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, Ad-du'a mukhul ibadah. If you are someone who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are a practicing Muslim. You are a faithful person. You practice Islam. You practice and you love Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallam. You need to understand that the intellectuality, the brains of ibadah is supplication and du'a. Prophet Nuh Salatullahi alayhi wa ala nabina In the Holy Quran in chapter Nuh in verse 28 He says Rabbi ghfir li Wa li walidayya wa li man dakhala bayti Oh my Lord forgive me 
my parents and all who enter my house so here the prophet of allah is connecting himself directly to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-baqarah verse 186 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni o prophet of allah and when my servants ask you concerning me fa inni qareeb fa inni qareebun ujibu da'wat ad-da'i i am indeed close i am close to my creations i listen to their prayers and to every supplication they do mm -hmm. and in times when they call me yes also another um, chapter in the holy quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of his servants of his prophets the issue of prophet zakaria when he grew old and his wife was not able to become pregnant and he asks allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in chapter maryam verses 3 to 10 here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us that even in times where about materialistic worldly matters that to do with you and your family ask me so these are the different types of supplications and different ty types of difficulties that we need to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you asking him he will answer you according to if there is if answering you is in your interest or not yes if you can remind me um of your question so inshallah i can yes. move on and we answer said, it yes said, now we said uh, in the time of struggles difficulties and problems or troubles of life who do we go to in the time of uh, tribulations yes exactly so it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because allah has said as i mentioned yes um, uh, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي when, when my servants ask about me, tell them Allah is close to you. Mm -hmm. Allah is close to us in when? When we have difficulties. Mm -hmm. Or even in, in times where we are happy, we are pleased, there is no difficulties. We also need to remind ourselves that we need to supplicate and call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Him for the good times. Mm -hmm. Let me read you the verse in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Anbiya. Yes. Verses 89 to 90. Was a career if Nada Rabbahu Rabbila Tetherni Ferdan. Wa and Tahirul Warithin. Zakaria saying, Oh Allah, I am all lonely. I wasn't given, I wasn't granted any children. And Zakaria, when he cried to his Lord, Oh my Lord, leave me not without offsprings, without children. Though you are the best of inheritors. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers him. فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ يَحْيَى وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَهُ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ Now when Allah gives you, don't forget yourself. Yes. You need to always remind yourself that I need to continue the good work. Even after Allah given me what I wanted, I shouldn't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we listened, Allah says, so we listened to him. And we granted him Yahya. We cured his wife. His wife was ill. He wasn't, she wasn't able to conceive any children. We cured his wife. For him, these three, Yahya, his son, uh, Zakaria, his son Yahya, and the mother of Yahya, these three were ever quick in deeds of goodness. Mm -hmm. After we granted Zakaria and his yes. wife the offspring and we gave him Yahya, they continued their life in striving towards goodness. وَأَيُّوبْ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الظُّرْ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ظُرْ And this is in chapter Anbiya, verse 84. And remember, Allah speaks to His Prophet, remind people and remember Ayyub when he cried to his Lord truly distress has seized me but you are the most merciful of those that are merciful mm -hmm. I have distress I have problems I am in difficulty I am going through a 
a very stressful period, O oh Allah, but still in these difficulties, you are the most merciful. Here you have to mention that, O oh Allah, you are Arhamur Rahim. You are the most merciful of those that are merciful. So, and then Allah says, so we listened to him. We removed the distress that was on him. Allah, when he sees that his servant yes. calls him, returns to him, yes. always reminds Allah subhanahu, reminds himself that Allah exists. Mm -hmm. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the call of that servant mm -hmm. and gives him what he asked for. So we always, always, no matter what situation we are going through, we always need to remind ourselves of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us. They asked Amir al-Mu'minin salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, Ara'it Allah? Have you seen Allah? Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam says, of course, how can I worship a Lord that I have not seen? And then they say to him, oh Imam, in the Holy Quran it says, Wala tudrikuhu al-absar. People cannot see him. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, yes, but in, in my inside, in my intellect and in my emotions, I can sense the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the creations around me, by the fact that he has given me this good health, for the fact that I am breathing this air, for the fact that I am drinking the water, for the fact that I have the sight, the power in my limbs, my hands and my legs, the fact that I can walk around, these are all proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. Mm -hmm. And Imam Ali alayhi salam says, every time I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I see Allah before it with with my worship and after my worship. So in every situation in our life, we need to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes people turn to normal men and women. In times of difficulty, they go to their father. In times of difficulty, they go to their mother. In times of difficulty, they go to their friends. Okay, go to them. But don't make that the initial, the first response uh -huh. towards your difficulty. Mm -hmm. For example, you call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say, Oh Allah, grant me good health. I am ill. Allah says, okay, you pray to me. You ask me first. And then you move, you do harakah, you go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. So there is no problem asking someone for help. Because Imam Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi says, Inna hawa'ijan nasi ilaykum min ni'amillahi alaykum. It is one of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to be able to fulfill and grant people their requests to help someone. So this is a ni'mah, a blessing. But initially, in the first instance, you need to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best places that you can get through and come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the holy shrines of Ahlul Bayt. In the shrines of Abi Abdullah al Hussein and his brother Abu al Fadl al Abbas. Because one of the attributes mm -hmm. that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted Imam Hussein sallallahu wa sallam alayhi because of the sacrifice that he sacrificed on the day of Ashura is that wad-du'a mustajabatun tahta qubbatih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted Abi Abdullah al-Hussein many attributes. One of them is that if you raise your hands under the dome of Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, your wishes, all your calls will be answered. Yes, yes Sayyidina, we will continue about uh, this topic. Uh, dearest viewers, every day in the Holy Land of Karbala carries or delivers a very uh, special message. This, this day, the eighth day of Muharram, carries the event, uh, the special event of Ali al-Akbar, the son of the master of martyrs, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, the brave, the brave son, the brave guy that was taught by his uncle, al-Abbas, peace be upon him, taught him how to be brave and how to be uh, uh, guiding people and how to be uh, facing the other uh, the enemies so uh, let us let us see this uh, procession or the reactment to procession for Ali and Al-Akbar and we come back in minutes <laughs>
their viewers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and peace be upon the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet Muhammad. Welcome to the special night, the 8th of Muharram, the night to the uh, 9th of Muharram, where we are going to show you a special uh, image from Karbala, the holy city of Karbala. So stay with us, dear uh, viewers, to see the night of Ali al Akbar, the son of uh, Ali uh, Aba Abdullah al Hussein, peace be upon them. So stay with us to show this beautiful image. Dear viewers, here we have one of our brothers. Salam alaikum and peace be upon you, uh, dear brother. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and all the viewers. Thank you. Uh, uh, dear brother, we have one question to you. Can you describe Ali al Akbar? We know Ali al Akbar. He's the son of uh, Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Can you d describe him for the viewers? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As you know, all the viewers, uh, Ali al-Akbar is the son of Imam al-Hussein. He was born in 42 after Hijra and uh, was martyred, innocently was martyred in the day of Ashura in 61 after the Hijra, aging almost, we can say, 19 years old. So we see that he's so young. How such a young, young man has such a faith, he believes in Prophet Muhammad, he believes in his father. There are some aspects that we have to mention. First of all, he is the son of Imam al Hussein, son of an infallible Imam. And also, he was raised by Lady Zainab, salamullahi alayha. His uncle, Abu al Fadl al Abbas, taught him horsing and uh, the art of. Uh, how to be a, a loyal soldier to, to your commander, which was his father on the day of Ashura. Also, we can mention about Ali al-Akbar that he was the best one who resembled his grand forefather, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi to the extent that Imam al Hussein always said that, oh Ali al-Akbar, whenever I want to remember my forefather, Prophet Muhammad, I have to look at you. You resemble your forefather in everything, in your behavior, in your voice, in your personality, and everything. And when the moment came and Ali al-Akbar wanted to ask his father for permission to go and fight the evil enemy, his father said, that's okay, I give you the permission, but you have to do one thing. Just walk a few steps in front of me, in front of your mother, in front of your aunt, Lady Zainab, so they see you because this is the last time that we can see can, that we can see Prophet Muhammad in you. So this is Ali Al Akbar. Thank you again. You are welcome. Thank you, dear viewers. We will let you see this beautiful uh, footage from Karbala. Stay with us, and after that, we will go to the studio. Back to the studio to my dear brother Ahmed Salim and the guest. Stay with us. Dear viewers, welcome again to Live from Karbala. Welcome again, Sayyidna. Thank you. We continue our discussion about the importance of supplication or dua. So, again, uh, who do we go to in the time of tribulation? Yes. Yes. In regards with who we go to, here the, the Holy Quran also tries to answer this question. Um, 
In Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 197, um, verse 197, Allah Taala through the verses tries to ask mankind, because sometimes mankind fails to understand who he needs to go and ask. They forget Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, because Allah is the one that has the ability to cure our problems, to help us. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has the power more than the power of any other mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the strength. So here in this verse, Surah Al-A'raf, verse 197, yes. um, And those whom you call upon, O mankind, those human beings, the normal people that you go to, and those whom you call upon besides him, besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are not able to help you. Nor can they help themselves. There will be times where they can't even help themselves, let alone help you. So don't forget that you need to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you don't need to, um, on first instance, go directly to mankind and forget the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another chapter, Surah Al An'am, verse 63. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ مَنْ يُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ When you get lost in the oceans, in the darkness of the oceans, in the darkness of land, say, who is it that delivers you or saves you from the dangers of land and sea? Here, you are calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah saying, I am the one. Someone came to Imam al-Sadiq and say to him, can you prove to me that Allah exists because I don't believe in God? Yes. Imam Sadiq salam, asks him one very simple question. He says, has it been, have you ever noticed yourself lost in the oceans? The man said, yes, there was a time where I was lost in the oceans. Imam told him, was there a time that this ship or this boat that he was traveling with broke down? The man said, yes, there was a time where there was a high tide and it broke my boat. It broke my ship. The man told him that moment that you were holding tightly to a shipwreck, to a, a, a piece of wood, was there a feeling inside you, attracting you, pulling you towards it, that made you feel that you need to call someone to help you? The man said, yes, there was a time where I knew that there was someone who was going to help me. I felt something pulling me towards it. Here, the Imam says, that is the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ هَلْ يَسْمَعُونَكُمْ إِذْ تَدْعُونَ In Surah Al-Shu'ara, verse 72, he said, do they listen to you when you call them? And this is for the Mushrikeen, the polytheists, when they used to call upon the idols um, instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are um, verses that uh, explain to us who we need to call when we speak to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, dearest the viewers, as you can hear uh, clearly, uh, we are talking now from uh, live from the holy city of Karbala. And of course, this is not a voiceover. This is uh, the voice of the Husseini ritual and processions for Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, and especially for Ali al Akbar. So, inshallah, the more you watch Imam Hussein TV3, the more you know about Karbala and the atmosphere of the Holy Land of Karbala and the atmosphere of Ashura. Yes, Sayyidina, in the part of life, we have set of uh, limitations and in this field of, you know, in, in our life, we have set of limitations. So we can focus and imp empower our, uh, our life, empower ourselves to create better realities to ourselves. And and this, according to the abilities we have, according to the capabilities that we are living with. So, how about man and his limitations in a providing and giving? Yes, we briefly mentioned some answers to this question in our earlier answers. We said that yes. man, overall, however he feels strong and and the energy and the power that he has in his existence mm -hmm. 
still he is not able to fulfill man's requirements because sometimes what man needs is not physical materialistic items around him man sometimes doesn't need food doesn't need clothing doesn't need to um, yes. be paid for example no mm -hmm. man sometimes need emotional help man sometimes need support with his needs and yes. in, in interior needs not exterior you tell me who of mankind of of humanity is able to provide me with my emotional support mm -hmm. okay i might be able to sit down with a scholar with with a with an honorable pious person and they need they might be able to remind me of the life after this life and the hereafter yes. and heaven and hell but at times that might still not be enough for mankind for the problems that he is facing there are times where man feels he is all alone in this world mm -hmm. although there might be hundreds of thousands of people around him mm -hmm. but that loneliness can be rectified by speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the middle of the night when all mankind and humanity are all um, resting and sleep but there is one one creator the creator of mankind he is always awake he never sleeps so if you are if you are feeling afraid mm -hmm. go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. because man is always limited of what he can give you and support you with your mother your father the ones who brought you to this world mm -hmm. they like and they love to help you in everything they can every power they have but there are times that even your father and your mother they need to speak to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example when you become ill your parents cannot help you so they take you to the doctors so your parents have limitations sometimes even the doctor cannot cure you because mm -hmm. they give you as much as medicine as possible but still you don't get cured so even the doctor has limitations mm -hmm. so who do we go to after the doctor is there another powerful person after the doctor that cure cures man's illnesses and diseases at least the exterior letting alone the interior the emotional the distress the times that you feel um, exhausted of your emotional energy here every person your mother your father the doctor um, every person in society every person in your community in, in, in mankind they all face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is the only one that does is not limited to anything Allah doesn't have limitations mm -hmm. and it only needs you to try to come to understand this reality Overall, man has tried seeking help, asking mankind for support. And they realize, always they realize that man is limited. But still they go back to mankind. So I ask my brothers and sisters, those who are listening, me, listening to me and to us today, why don't you try an, a new approach to curing your problems? And that is, speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come to the holy sites for example you go to next to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, the holy Kaaba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if you speak to me and supplicate me and worship me next to my house the house of Kaaba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you everything you need it is narrated that the first time you go to Hajj and the first you the first time you you look and you cite the holy house of Kaaba make sure you prepare your dua the first thing you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that time allah will grant it for you if you go to the holy burial site and the mosque of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the holy city of medina mm -hmm. if you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are next to the burial site of the holy prophet you say oh allah i have come visiting your the grave of your beloved prophet peace be upon him and i ask you for the love and for the um um, closeness of this great man great figure i ask you to grant me all my wishes allah because he loves the holy prophet allah will grant you 
this great man, this great personality, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, he is one of the gates of fulfillment of all man's requirements. Bab al-Hawa'ij, mm -hmm. he is well known for this attribute. Mm -hmm. So why don't you come and knock the door of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas? Why don't you go and knock the door of Ali ibn Abi Talib? Overall, he is the first representative representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the Holy Prophet. He is his beloved Khalifa. He is Ali ibn Abi Talib. He is Halalul Mashakil. He is the one that cures and, and rectifies all our problems. Because we always say, Nadi Ali and Mudhir al Ajaib. تجده عونا لك في النوائب كل هم وغم سينجلي بعظمتك يا الله بنبوتك يا محمد بولايتك يا علي يا علي يا علي. We go to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We say, Oh Allah, we are knocking the doors of your beloved people, your beloved servants, Muhammad, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein, especially Imam Hussein صلى الله وسلم عليه. Even if you come to the doors of the burial site of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, and say, Oh Imam, I stand before you and I know the position of your mother Fatima al Zahra. I know how much you love your mother Fatima. I ask you for the love of your mother Fatima to grant me everything that I need. There were millions of people before us that came and knocked the doors of these great individuals and they succeeded. They interceded to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They done shafa'a. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured them of their illnesses. They um, paid their debts. They um, gave them what they wanted. If either they wanted to get married, they wanted children, offsprings. They wanted to buy a house. They mm -hmm. wanted to get out of poverty. Allah will grant you what mm -hmm. you need out of this life. If you go and knock the door of Abi Abdullah al Hussein so of course Sayyidina, children need education and also support from their family not only just uh, begetting them or bringing them so they need a special kind of of care and also within this care how about the prayers of the parents for their children that's of very course. important and i want to remind you of the time that we have almost seven minutes sure of course there are different types of prayers. There is a prayer of a father towards his son. There is a prayer of a husband towards his wife. There is a prayer of a servant asking Allah his creator. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that for parents to pray and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what they need in their children, Allah will answer their call and answer their prayers. Because the dua, as it is narrated by... Um, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam Dua al-Um, especially the mother because of the um, the emotional attraction she has towards the children because of the difficult times she went through in conceiving and the time of pregnancy and the time of delivery and the time that she um, stayed awake at night for example caring for these children Allah, because of those difficult times, He will um, reward her. What is her reward? Is that when she raises her hand and prays for her son or her daughter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant her. So, this is one of the needs of children towards their parents, is that their parents always pray for them. As Prophet Nuh alayhi salam Allah Nabi wa alihi wa alihi salam says, Rabbi khfirli wali walidayya wali man dakhala bayti amin mu'minan. Here the Prophet is praying for himself and is praying for his parents. One time we pray for our parents and one time our parents pray for us. No doubtly our parents, there is no parent on the face of this earth that doesn't pray for their children because the children are the, the most loved people to the hearts of fathers and mothers. And in this discussion, I want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially these nights. No doubt in all parts of the world, there are parents who have been married for a long period of time, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his knowledge, has not granted them any offspring, any children. We ask for the love of Abil Fadl al-Abbas and for the love of Imam Hussain alayhi salam to grant them healthy, 
faithful children inshallah. Yeah, inshallah now on karbala on the events of ashura we noticed that there was a prayer made by mm -hmm. a father and a mother regarding their son mm -hmm. we have example of yes one example is the example of wahab the christian man his mother prayed for him yeah. to get shahada yes. to own shahada another is the prayer of the mother of al qasim ibn al hasan mm -hmm. the mother of al qasim prayed for him for his um, shahada and for his well-being the another example which i want to concentrate on tonight which is the night of the son of imam hussein ali al akbar sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that when Ali al Akbar alayhi salam went to the battlefield and the mother of Ali al Akbar Layla was looking at the face of Imam Hussein to see if there was if her son was okay. Every time Imam was happy, pleased, she she was um, feeling proud of her son, that her son was doing good. She, he was fighting well like a warrior. And every time she noticed that the Imam's face, the color of his face changed, mm -hmm. she would have noticed that there is something wrong so once she came to the to the imam when ali al akbar was busy in the battlefields she asked him why do i see your face changing color is there anything wrong with my son imam alayhi salam says to her no your son is fine but i see one of the strongest warriors in the camp of umar ibn sa'ad advancing towards our son so the mother says oh son of Rasulullah, what shall I do? Teach me. Is there any way I can help my son? Imam salam says to her, go back to the tents. Go back to your tent and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray to Allah subhanahu mm -hmm. wa ta'ala for his safety and for his return to the camps. Mm -hmm. Layla comes back to the, tent, to, the, to the tents and starts supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She uncovers her hair because once you uncover your hair, being male or female, the malaika will be shy mm -hmm. to see you uncovering your hair which is the most um, um, noble action that man can do when he is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the malaika will say to Allah oh Allah this servant of yours he has uncovered his head why don't you give him and grant him what he wants so the mother of Ali Akbar Layla came she uncovered her hair and started asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she started saying Ya Radda Yusuf ila Yaqub Ilahi bi ghurbati Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Oh Allah, you're the one that returned Yusuf to his father Yaqub. Oh Allah, you can see how lonely Abi Abdullah al Hussein is on the land of Karbala. Oh Allah, Ilahi bi atashi Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Because the thirst of Imam Hussein alayhi salam wrecked and shocked the whole universe ilahi bi atashi abi abdullah al hussein rudda ilayya waladi irdud ilayya waladi oh allah bring back my son for the um, sorrows that are being put uh, imam hussein is being put through here ali al akbar comes to his father and says oh father allow me to go to the battlefield Imam Hussein alayhi salam hugs Ali al Akbar and they start crying for a period of time until they both fall unconscious on the ground. They wake, they come back to consciousness. Mm -hmm. Ali al Akbar takes permission from his father and goes to the battlefield and starts reciting these words. Ana Hussein, Ana Ali ibn al Hussein ibn Ali. نحن وبيت الله أولى بالنبي الله لا يحكم فينا ابن الدعي أضربكم بالسيف حتى ينثني ضرب غلام هاشمي علوي He went to the battlefield chanting I am Ali the son of Hussein son of Ali We are the ones that should be ruling the house of Allah and we are the closest people to the house of Allah and to the Holy Prophet by Allah we will never allow the son of the oppressed individuals to be leaders on us
an individual called Bakr ibn Ghanim started advancing towards Ali al-Akbar but Ali al-Akbar being a strong warrior he started fighting with this man and he was able to overthrow him onto the ground eventually killing him Ali al-Akbar came back to the tents he said oh father أو أبا إن العطش قد قتلني وثقل الحديد قد جهدني فهل إلى شربة ماء فهل إلى شربة ماء من سبيل أقوى بها على الأعداء عند ذلك صاح الحسين وولده وعليا he came to his father and he said oh father this sword and this shield that I am carrying is so heavy it is making me tired and the heat of the sun is making me thirsty is there a drop of water I can drink so I can become energized and I can go back to the battlefield and fight on the sake of Allah and then it is that Imam Hussein started shouting wa waladah wa aliya Ali al-Akbar came to see his mother his mother said oh Ali don't go back to the battlefield Ali al-Akbar says how can I not go back to the battlefield and I can see my father shouting is there no one available to support and help us he bid his farewells to his mother went back to the battlefield he started fighting like a strong warrior Hamid ibn Muslim says Murra ibn Munqad al-Abdi was standing next to me and he said to me this man this young man the son of Ali alayya athamu al-Arab in marra bi hadha al-Ghulam walam uthkil bihi abah wa umma I am not a warrior all the sins of mankind and all the sins of Arabs will be on me if I do not go and kill this young man he says he advanced towards Ali al-Akbar they fought for some time eventually Ali al-Akbar was struck on the head he knelt down on the neck of the horse the blood of the head of Ali al-Akbar fell on the eyes of the horse the horse instead of taking Ali al-Akbar to the tents of Imam Hussein he took him to the tents and the camp of the enemies the enemies came and surrounded him they started striking Ali al-Akbar's body with their swords until they cut him into pieces he fell onto the plains of Karbala he shouted Abaya Hussain alayka minni salam Imam Hussain came to the side of Ali al-Akbar he slept besides Ali al-Akbar he placed his cheek on the cheeks of Ali al-Akbar he started saying Munay Ali ala dunya ba'dak al-afa it is narrated that lady Zainab noticed that Imam Hussein was about to die because of the pain of seeing his son in that situation she came out of the tent advancing towards Ali al-Akbar shouting and screaming and hitting her head saying wa walada wa aliya wa akha wa husayna manjurin sayyidna jazakum allah khair amin sayyidna Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, did not only pray for Ali al-Akbar, but he supported him to reach this place of martyrdom. As-salamu alayka, Abu Abdullah, wa ala al-arwah allati hallat bi-fina'ik, and especially as-salamu ala 
علي الأكبر في مثل هذه الأيام أيام عاشوراء Dearest viewers إن شاء الله we will continue our, um, our episodes from live from Karbala in the coming nights wait for us إن شاء الله special thanks to the director Mustafa Khun and our brother the reporter Yasser um, and also the sound editor Qasim Amidi the photographers the cameraman uh, Saad Qureshi and Hassan Alaq and also the graphic designer uh, Salam as Sultani. We leave you with the security of God, with the safety of God, and also with this special shots and footages for the reactment procession for Ali Al Akbar fi Amanullah.